All right, so this video we're going to be going over the concepts of equilibrium, and it's actually called dynamic equilibrium. So when you have a reaction, a lot of reactions are actually reversible, which means they can go and forward to make the products, and they can also go backwards to make the reactants again. And whenever you see a double arrow like this, or like this, that means that the reaction is reversible. So these reactions, um, I can go forward to make the products, I can also go backwards to recreate the reactants. So it can proceed in both directions. And the types of reactions that you're going to see this with would be um, reactions and solutions, and also gases. You'll see that a lot with gases too. So not every single reaction is reversible, but a lot of them are. All right, so it's the same kind of concept with a high school couple. You have a single boy and a single girl. They come together, they fall in love or whatever, and become a couple. Well, it's high school, so what usually ends up happening is they will break up and become the single girl and the single boy again. Okay, so the way a chemical reaction works is that at the beginning of the reaction, the concentration of the reactants is high. So you have lots of reactants here. So maybe I'm going to have this plus, oh. so maybe I'm going to have this um, plus this to create this molecule. Okay, so I'm going to have lots of these things in the reaction in the beginning and then none of the product. Well, so as the reaction proceeds, the concentration of the reactants will decrease. So I'll actually have less and less of these, and then I will begin to make more and more of my product. All right, so collisions are more likely to happen between the reactants at this point because the concentration of the reactants are so high. So the rate of the forward reaction, or the rate I make products, is going to be very high because I've got a lot of reactants to react and make those products. All right, so towards the middle of the reaction, you're going to have more products that are being formed, and they begin colliding with each other, and then the reactants will actually be formed. So you will have more of your products, and then you're going to have less reactants at this point too. So you'll probably have a few of these. Well, what ends up happening is those products will actually go in the reverse reaction and make more of your reactants again. So the rate of the reverse reaction begins to increase towards the middle of the reaction. Okay, so at a certain point, the rate at which you make these products and then uh, the rate at which you make these reactants again is going to be equal. And then that's called equilibrium. So the equilibrium is when the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. So it just means the rate at which I'm making products is the same as the rate that I'm going backwards to make the reactants. It does not mean that the number of reactants is equal to the number of products. That is not what that means. It means that the rate at which I'm forming the products is equal to the rate that I'm making the reactants. So this is what it'll look like if I graph it. So if I'm looking at the rate of the forward reaction, so the rate at which I'm making products, as I move forward in the reaction, the forward rate begins to decrease, and that's because I'm using up my reactants to make products, so I'm not going to be able to make as many products. Well, the reverse reaction will start to increase towards the middle, and that's because well, I'm making more products, so now I have more chances to go backwards and make the reactants. Well, eventually, as I let the reaction proceed, these rates will be equal to each other. So if I'm graphing it, I should see that they come to meet each other in the middle. Now, if I'm looking at the amount of reactants versus products, equilibrium is when the amount is not changing. It's just staying the same. So as I come to this point, this equilibrium, you'll notice that the amount of products and the amount of reactants is not changing. And that's because as I go forward in the reaction and both of the rates are equal, well, the amount of um, products that's being formed 
is equal to the amount of reactants being formed. So that rate will be equal, not the amount necessarily. And so if you look at this right here, you'll see that products, the amount is not equal to the reactants here. And a lot of times they will not be equal. All right, so equilibrium looks like the reaction has stopped. It's still, stuff is still happening though. The reverse reaction is happening, the forward reaction is happening, it's just they're happening at the same time, so it doesn't look like anything's happening. This is why we say it's dynamic, because there are changes happening all the time. The amount of products and the amount of reactants is not changing at this point. It doesn't mean that the amounts are equal, it just means that the amount itself is not going to be changing at this point. So you're going to have some products and some reactants at this point. So if I have this reaction right here, this is when you have I2 plus H2 produces uh, this. Okay, so this is what it looks like in the beginning. I have lots of I2s, lots of H2s. Uh, at equilibrium, I'm going to have some I2s and some H2s, and I'm also going to have some products. So I have product here, 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 and then I have some of the reactants. Doesn't mean that they're equal in amounts, it's just me at this point, the rate that I make the IHI is equal to the rate that I go backwards to make I2 and H2. So if I have a particle diagram of something at equilibrium, you should see some reactants and some products. All right, so the law of mass action is where we mathematically look at the concentration of your reactants and your products. So it explains and it predicts behaviors of the species and a reaction. So Kc is a special number. It's the equilibrium constant of concentration. And what it does, what if you look at it, Kc is equal to the amount of products divided by the amount of reactants. More specifically, anytime you see these brackets, by the way, it means concentration. It means that you would take the concentration of each of the products to the power of its coefficient, multiply those together, and then divide it by the reactants to the power of its coefficients. Okay, so Kc is always equal to a certain number for every single reaction. No matter how much you start with or how much you end with, Kc is always going to be the same number. Okay, so whenever you're writing this uh, equation right here, the reactants and the products, they have to be in the same state. So if they're all aqueous, they can all be included. But if you have a solid or a liquid, you don't include those. If you have a gas, you don't include those with aqueous either. Okay, so K. K is very important because it can tell you if the reaction is going to be more favored for the products or the reactants. So which direction is uh, the reaction going to go in? Is it going to go more in the product side to make more products or is it going to go backwards to make more reactants? Well, you can tell by the size of K. So if K is greater than 1, what that means, and you have to remember, what you have to remember is that K is equal to products divided by the reactants. So, So when you're looking at this, if k is greater than 1, then that means the top number is going to be bigger. Um, so that means that you have more products than you have reactants, which means that this reaction likes to make more products, which means that the forward reaction where you make more products is favored. Well, if k is less than 1, it means that this number down here is bigger. So that means that you have more reactants than products, which means that the reaction is more favored in the reactant direction. So the reverse reaction will be favored there. If K is approximately one, products will be equal to the reactant, so the top number is equal, or almost equal to the bottom number. The reactions are equal. Okay, so let's look at some K values. Okay, so let's look at this first one. 2.8 times 10 to the second. Well, that means that K here is larger than one, so K is larger than 1, the forward reaction is favored. 
So that means I'm going to make more products than I will reactants. This one, is K is, well, it's 2.7 times 10 to the negative 17th, so that means it's less than 1. So that means the bottom number is bigger, so that means that my reverse reaction is favored. And then right here, again, it's to a negative exponent, so that means it's small. So K is less than 1, the reverse reaction is favored. So I'm going to have more reactants in these two reactions than I will products because the reverse reaction is favored, not the product reaction or the forward reaction. Okay, so in the following system um, at equilibrium, which what will be in a higher concentration? Reactants or products? Okay, so we have this reaction right here and we look at the Kc value. Well, Kc is and Kc is just K of the concentration, um, is less than 1, it's very small, which means that the reverse reaction will be favored. So if it's less than 1, remember that means the bottom number is bigger, That's the re those are the reactants, so that means I'm going to have more reactants than I do products. So if I wanted to draw a, a particle diagram, I'm going to say, okay, I know that N2O would be two nitrogens and one oxygen. So let this be N2O. O2 will just be will just be uh, two clear circles. And then NO will be a dark circle and a clear. All right, so if I'm going to draw this particle diagram, that means that in this reaction, since the reverse reaction is favored, I should actually have more reactants. So I'm going to have, let's say, here's a reactant, here's another reactant, and well, here's a product. I will make some products but I should have more reactants than I do products because the reaction is favored in the reverse. So that means that I'm going to have more reactants being formed than I do products. All right, so just a few things that you need to remember about K. It depends only on the reaction stoichiometry, so basically it depends on your coefficients in the equation, not the way it's made or the mechanism. Uh, it's not dependent on the concentrations that you start off with. Um, so it doesn't matter how much you start off with with the reaction. It doesn't matter. K will always be the same. It's also unaffected by other substances. So if you put something else in the reaction and it does not react with the reactants or the products, it doesn't affect K at all. It will vary with temperature. It's written without units, and it never includes pure liquids or pure solids. All right, so let's write the K expression for these following reactions. So remember, KC is going to be equal to each of my products to the power of its coefficient. divided by the concentration of each of the reactants to the power of its coefficients. Okay, so every K expression should look like this. So let's do the first one right here. All right, so KC is equal to, well, let's look at the products first, products on top. Well, uh, I have a solid here, so I'm not going to include solids in this reaction or in this expression. So CO2 is a gas, I can include that. So the concentration of CO2, well, the coefficient here is one, so that to the one first power, I don't need to write that. And then I would divide that by the concentration of the reactants, but again, I have a solid here, so my Kc is actually just equal to the concentration of CO2. That's the only thing that, I'm at, uh, that, depend, that Kc is dependent on. So let's look at the next one. All right, so Kc, uh, products divided by reactants. 
Okay, so we have aqueous, aqueous, so I can include that in my expression. Um, so the concentration of silver to the power of its coefficient, there's no coefficient here, so no coefficient or no power. Um, Cl. So the concentration of chlorine ions, but it has a coefficient here of 2. So I'm going to take that to the second power. Now I would divide that by my reactants, but solids can't be included here. So do not include solids or liquids and make sure that everything is in the same state of matter. All right, so this is my Kc value of this one. All right, let's look at the next one. All right, so Kc... is equal to the products. So the concentration of CO times the first power because there's no coefficient here multiplied by the concentration of water. So I'm including all of these uh, reactants and products because they're all in the gaseous state. To the first power because there's no coefficient here and then divide that by my reactants, so CO2, concentration of CO2, to the first power, because there's no coefficient here, multiplied by H2, to the first power again, because there's no coefficient. So that's my KC expression for this reaction. And I'm going to include everything here, because everything's the gaseous state. So you can include gases, and you can include aqueous, uh, you cannot include solids or liquids, and you have to make sure everything is in the same state of your expression. So let's look at the next one. All right, so, so now I'm going to look at my products. Well, I have, this is aqueous, so I can include this. So copper, uh, multiplied by my other reactant or other product, but it's in a solid state, so I do not include it. It has to be in the same state, and I cannot include solids and liquids. All right, so divided by my reactants, well, copper, I don't include copper because it's a solid here, but I will include silver. And since there is a coefficient here of 2, it's to the second power. So that would be my Kc expression for this one. Okay, so let's look at something else. All right, so the following experiments were done, and the concentration of each species was measured at equilibrium. Calculate Kc for each experiment. So basically, three experiments were done for this reaction. They measured the concentration of each of the reactants and products, and we need to calculate what Kc is. So these are the concentrations at equilibrium. So the first thing we should do is write the Kc expression. Okay, so products divided by reactants, everything's in the gaseous state, so I will include everything. And this will be a balanced equation, it's already balanced. Okay, so the concentration of this uh, multiplied by the concentration of the water by the concentration of the water. All right, so, and to the first power for both of them because there are no coefficients. So we're going to divide that by the concentrations of the reactants. So this is my first reactant. I do include it because it's a gas. Everything here is a gas. Multiplied by the other reactant. All right, so that's my Kc expression. So now I'm just going to plug my numbers in because I already ha I have the concentration of each of my reactants and products so I can just figure out what Kc is by just plugging it into the expression. So C3H7OCO2C2H5 okay well let's figure out what that is. Um, I know what water is. This is water. Ethanol 
is C2H5OH. So I've got butanoate and then butanoic acid. Um, so right here, and then for purposes of like a test or quiz, they, everything will be labeled here. Butanoic acid will actually be um, this right here, and then the, butone, the butanoate will be this right here. And like I said, for a test or quiz, I would give you the uh, everything labeled. All right, so um, ethyl butanoate is this thing right here. Um, so that I have 20 moles of that. So I'm just going to plug everything into the KC expression. So it's 20 for butanoate. And then for water, it's also 20. I'm going to divide that by my ethanol, which is 10, multiplied by my butanoic acid, which is also 10. All right, so just plug and chug at this point. 20 times 20 is 400, divided by 100. Should be a value of 4. So my KC value is 4 here. So what that means is that the forward reaction is favored, so you're going to have more products than reactants here. All right, let's look at the next one. All right, so um, remember it's products divided by reactants, so I have 10 for this one, and then I have 40 for the water. And for my reactants, I have 5 and 20. Alright, so here I have 10 times 40, which should be 400. 5 times 20 would be 100. So again, it's 4. And you should see that. If you're getting the right K value, the K value will never change. It doesn't matter how much you have of everything. Um, K will always be the same. So it should be 4 for the third experiment, too. So let's look at it. Alright, so we have 12 times 10 for my products and we're going to multiply that by or divide that by 30 so divided by our reactants so that's going to be 120 divided by 30 so again it ends up being 4 so it doesn't matter how much you have the amount isn't important what's important is the ratio which should always be the same so it's going to be 4 All right, so with systems with gases, we can also calculate a different, slightly different value, Kp. So this is the constant, the equilibrium constant dealing with partial pressures. So if you have a canister of different gases, each of those gases has its own pressure that it contributes to the total pressure. Um, so Kp only applies to gases. And you can set up the Kp just the same as Kc. It's just partial pressures instead of concentrations. So let's write the Kp equation or expression for this. All right, so uh, Kp is equal to products divided by reactants. So remember, this only applies to gases. So this is a solid here, so we don't include it in the Kp expression. This is a gas, so I will include it. So the partial pressure of hydrogen, and then it's going to be to the fourth power because that's my coefficient here. So now let's look at our reactants. Iron is a solid, I don't include it, but water is a gas, so I will include it. So the partial pressure of water to the fourth power as well. And I'm not going to reduce anything right here. Okay, so that is my KP expression for this.